today's video, we will be going through a war drama film entitled American Sniper. The movie begins with the Marines and the mission to clear a city. At the rooftop, a SEAL sniper named Chris Kyle and his comrade are watching the troops from above when Chris notices a woman and a child. He is surprised when the woman gives the kid an RKG Russian grenade and orders him to throw it to the Marines on the ground. Looking through his scope, Chris gets ready to pull the trigger. Then, we get a flashback of a young Chris with his father who's teaching him how to hunt. Later, after attending a mass, his father lectures him and his brother, Jeff, about different kinds of people in the world. Then, we see Jeff being picked on by bigger kids when Chris steps up and fights for his brother. It turns out that their father is scolding them for what they've done, but is proud to know that Chris finishes the bigger kid. Years have passed, Chris became a ranch hand and a rodeo cowboy. When he, along with Jeff, gets home, he sees his girlfriend with another man. His girlfriend tries to gaslight him, but Chris told her to leave. Later, while drinking, the two brothers come across news about a terror attack and this infuriates Chris. The next day, he goes to the Armed Forces Career Center to enlist for the war. Then, he is instructed to go to the Navy SEALs to train. After hardships of training, Chris successfully became a part of the Navy SEAL. At the bar, he meets a woman named Taya. At first, Taya is not interested in him, especially after knowing that he's part of the SEAL, but Chris successfully gets Taya to like him until they go out on a date. One day, Taya calls Chris and they both watch the news about the terror attack in the World Trade Center. In bed, the couple talks about their future lives together. Then, Chris and Taya get married. Chris knows that he only has a few days to spend with his wife, but he assures Taya that he will be fine. During his first tour at Fallujah, Chris and his comrades are assigned to protect the Marines who will be clearing the areas of any terrorist. While going to their post on a rooftop, one soldier talks to Chris about an enemy sniper named Mustafa who is said that can shoot from 500 yards. Back to the present, with no other choice, Chris pulls the trigger, killing the child. The woman, then, picks up the grenade and rushes to the Marines, but Chris shoots her as well. Everyone commends Chris for what he had done, but he's not happy about killing a woman and a child. The next day, his comrades commends Chris for his kill count, but Chris, on the other hand, is disappointed with himself for allowing Mustafa to kill a Marine when he takes one down the other night. At the barracks, one of his comrades, Biggles, calls him a legend and it became his war name since then. Afterward, Taya calls Chris and it is shown that Taya is pregnant. The two miss each other and Taya silently cries as she watches the death count of American soldiers in the news. Taya, then, suddenly remembers about Chris's father and tells Chris to call him. It turns out that Jeff, is also deployed in the war in Iraq. The scene changes to the soldiers discussing their next mission. They are assigned to take down Abu Musab al-Zarqawi, the Al-Qaeda leader, and his lieutenants. After their meeting, Chris wants to work on the ground with the Marines, but his comrade, Mark, tells him that everyone feels safe when he's watching over them using a sniper. During the clearing operation, a Marine is shot down upon entering a house. This makes Chris follows his guts and comes down from the rooftop to join the ground team. Leading the Marines, they successfully capture a family and interrogate the father about his knowledge about the terrorist. With a Marine being their interpreter, the man tells Chris about the butcher, Zarqawi's number one soldier. Chris asks for further details but the father wants $100,000 for the risk they will face upon cooperating with the Americans. Upon agreeing with the deal, the man gives Chris the name Amir Khalaf Fainis which is the actual name of the butcher. Upon confirming the information from the intelligence department, they go back to the man, with his money. At the truck, Taya calls Chris and tells him that their baby is a boy. However, their celebration is interrupted when they are intercepted by Mustafa as he shoots their driver. Hearing the shootout on the line, Taya cries in worrying for his husband. Using a mirror, Chris sees the butcher carrying the man's son. They try to engage but they are pinned down by the sniper. Meanwhile, the man tries to beg with the butcher but he puts his drill in the kid's head and kills him. The man forces his way to his son but he is shot to death by the butcher's men. Then, the butcher threatens to kill anyone who will participate with the Americans. The scene changes to Chris going home. Then, we see Chris manifesting post-traumatic stress disorder as he becomes warier when he hears machine noises. Afterward, Chris accompanies his wife to her checkup when the doctor notices something with him. She, then, checks Chris's blood pressure and he is high blood. At the car, the couple is arguing about Chris hiding his true conditions when suddenly Taya feels that she will give birth. Afterward, Taya finds Chris watching a video about an American soldier being shot and they argue again. Taya clearly sees that his husband is not alright, but he keeps denying it. The scene changes to Chris going for his second tour when he sees his brother. He immediately approaches Jeff and is so happy to see him, but something is clearly wrong with Jeff. Asking if he's okay, 
Chris tells his brother that he and their father is proud of him. Then, Jeff gets back to his troop but curses the place as he leaves. This puzzles Chris but he continues his way to his ride. At the chopper, his comrades tell him that he's the most wanted man in Iraq with a $180,000 bounty in his head, but Chris just laughs it off. In this tour, Kyle will be leading the hunt for the butcher. As they enter an apartment, they quickly clear the family of any weapons and set up a post. They question the family if they know the butcher but they denied. Later, the father invites them to join the family for the Eid Al-Adha supper, which they gladly accept. During the meal, Chris notices something with the man's arm and excuses himself from the others. He, then, searches the area and is surprised to see a trap door full of firearms. Chris quickly grabs the man and bring him to the room. Then, they make a deal with him to help them get into the butcher's place. Afterward, the soldiers position themselves while the man knocks at the restaurant where the butcher is. Upon opening the door, the sniper quickly takes the terrorist down, and a shootout happens. The soldiers quickly clear the area, but the butcher manages to escape through a tunnel in the back. He manages to hop into a truck, but Chris follows right after and shoots them, making their vehicle explodes, taking down the butcher. The scene changes to Kyle with his son in a repair shop where a man recognizes and approaches him. It is a soldier that he saved back in Fallujah and he thanked Chris for what he had done to him in their country. Before they leave, the man tells Chris to visit the Veterans Affairs Healthcare Center sometimes. Afterward, we see Chris at the nursery of the hospital looking at his newborn daughter. He notices that his child is crying and calls for the nurse to attend to her, but he is past that no one is listening to him. Then, we see Taya breastfeeding her daughter while talking to Chris about her feelings of being alone most of the time and she emphasizes that the war is changing Chris. In his third tour, Chris and his comrades spot Mustafa's men at the rooftop, and they, indeed, call Mustafa, alerting him of their presence. Suddenly, the people in the van they're following start shooting at them, but they successfully take them down. They immediately head to the rooftop and clear it. Unfortunately, when they're setting up security, Biggles is shot by Mustafa in the face. Upon requesting backup, they immediately retreat and take Biggles to the base to be treated. Afterward, Chris and the whole squad get back to the area to continue their mission and avenge Biggles. Unfortunately, Mark is shot dead when they are ambushed while clearing a building. The scene changes to Chris and Taya attending their funerals. Then, we see Chris visit Biggles in the hospital and he assures him that they will get revenge for him. At home, Chris tells Taya to find another man if ever he never comes back home. Taya breaks down and says she needs him. She, then, tells Chris that if he ever leaves again, she and the children may be gone when he comes home. But this doesn't stop Chris from going on his fourth tour. There, one of their comrades tells him that Biggles, unfortunately, died during an operation. Then, they have a meeting about their mission to take down the enemy sniper to help the engineers finish the wall they are building that is said to be a great help in winning the war for them. The challenge is that it is within the enemy's stronghold and a sandstorm is coming. After gearing up, they proceed to the area and immediately position themselves on the rooftop. Meanwhile, Mustafa, who's also at another rooftop, takes down a soldier. This alerts Chris of his location and quickly assesses that Mustafa is about 2,100 yards from them. He reports it to the base and they tell him that the response team is 20 minutes away from them. Because of this, one of his comrades tells Chris to not shoot in the meantime because their location will be exposed. However, their comrades are within Mustafa's range and are about to be killed. With no other choice, Chris takes his chance and successfully kills Mustafa. It's a mission success, but the enemies below them start swarming and shooting them. Chris and his comrades fight back. After some time, they start running out of ammo, but the enemies are still coming. With low ammo and a sandstorm coming, one of Chris's comrades requests an airstrike at their location. Then, Chris calls Taya and tells her that he's ready to go home. However, due to the incoming sandstorm, the airstrike misses and the seals are forced to move on foot in the middle of the sandstorm. Luckily, everyone survives. The scene changes to Chris drinking in a bar when Taya calls him. She tells her husband to go home because they missed him so much. The next day, Chris is spacing out, recalling his time in the war. Later, he and Taya are talking while watching their kids playing when he sees their dog starts aggressively playing with his son. Chris quickly grabs the dog and is about to hit it when Taya stops him. Realizing what is happening to him, Chris finally visits the Veterans Affairs Healthcare Center. Chris talks to a doctor and he assesses how Chris copes up with the traumas of the war, but Chris insists that he is fine. Although, he feels haunted, not by the people he killed, but by the people he failed to save. Realizing that Chris wants to save more lives, the doctor brings Chris to a support group where he bonds with other veterans. Since then, 
Chris spends more time in the VA the scene changes to Chris and his family moving to his homeland, Texas. In there, he plays with his daughter, teaches his son how to hunt, and becomes sweet with Taya again. Chris makes sure he spends more quality time with his family, compensating for the time he wasn't around for them. Years later, on February 2, 2013, he is going to accompany a veteran to a shooting range as part of his advocacy to help war veterans. Before leaving, he bids his sweetest goodbye to his family and tells his son to always look after his mother and sister. Taya accompanies his husband to the front door. Upon seeing the veteran, there is a hint of unease in Taya's face as she slowly closes the door. Then, it is revealed using an on-screen subtitle that Chris is killed by the veteran on that same day. Afterward, we see footage of crowds standing along the highway, waving an American flag, for Chris's funeral procession. The movie ends with more people shown to attend the funeral of the legend.